What's up guys, Holy Crap it's Rob here, and uh, today we're going to do a video about rendezvous and docking and how to do it in Kerbal Space Program 2. So I have this rocket here, I already have one up in orbit already, and um, this one's capable of docking with the uh, one in orbit. This is a lot overkill, this is actually meant to go to the moon, but um, yeah, that didn't happen. Thank you guys, we're on the launch pad now, no deal, check your staging, check SAS, check the throttle. Press space for and skip the count. Okay guys, now we're in orbit with Dilney Kerman. And um, yeah, so the basic way of rendezvousing is you wanna line up with your target. So we're currently at the same altitude as the target, which is uh, fly safe three. Let's see if we can make this a target. Set target. Okay. So, it's a little more complicated than in case people want as I could tell, or as you could tell. But um, this is one target intersect, two. This is target intersect one, target vehicle intersect two. Okay, this is the ascending mode, I'm guessing. Oh, I see it, this is the descending mode, vehicle intersect two, or one. Okay, so I'm not quite sure of the difference between vehicle intersect and target intersect. Vehicle intersect was not in case P1, so you're not going to need it as much as you're going to need target intersect. I know that much. I'm going to just base this all off target intersect to pretend vehicle intersect doesn't exist. Distance from target, 1,000 kilometers, 3,000 meters per second relative speed. So you want your distance from target to be very low, and you want your relative speed to be relatively low too. So how do we do that? Well, as you see, when you orbit around the body, um, you orbit like this, and the closer you go to the body, the faster you orbit. And the further away from the body, the slower you orbit. You orbit a lot slower. Like the moon compared to Minmus, if I was to just warp time really quickly. Like, see how fast we're moving around the Earth compared to how the moon is moving around the Earth? Yeah. So, as you can see, we're currently behind the target, so we're going to have to get a little lower of an orbit. I planned this out ahead of time. So this orbits about 100,000 meters above the ground. So um, we have about 30,000 meters to spare by lowering our orbit. Since we're already pretty much at the apoapsis of our orbit. Oh wait, that's the apoapsis of our orbit. We'll just lower it, um, um, our altitude at periapsis right now anyways. And then we'll get an encounter. At a, Later step. So yeah, we're just gonna detach this first stage right here. We don't need it, or second stage, we don't need it. It's gonna be easier to maneuver like this any, anyways. Now that we lowered our periapsis a little bit, we could uh, start to make it move into it. And um, there's a lot going on around here. I wish we could get rid of some stuff. But, um, yeah. So we're going to burn a periapsis. Or we're going to make a maneuver on a periapsis. And um, let's see what the intersect is like. This one's already a thousand. Okay, now let's see if we can. Okay. If you right click a maneuver node while it's open like this. If you right click, you'll get to this, which is um, another form of the maneuver where you can change its orbits. Hey guys, Future Rob here, and uh, I just wanted to go show you guys a picture of the KSP-1 maneuver node editor. And to uh, show you that, I put an arrow to the button that um, you could press to change the orbits that I could not find in KSP-2. If you can find a KSP-2, let me know down in the comments below. If you can't, well, we'll probably add it in the future. If they don't, then that's a shame.
In case P1, you had the ability to change how many orbits ahead the maneuver was, so instead of it being here, it would be around here, or around here, or around here. But it would be in the same place on the orbit, but it would be many orbits ahead if you wanted it to be. So, what we can do is we could wait and um, watch. So, if you watch, You'll, or if you look, you'll see this is 449,000 meters distance from target, relative speed 1,478. That's with the maneuver node that I just put there. So if I time warp all the way around to the next orbit, past this, past the, and as you see, I'm getting closer to the thing every orbit, which means that my intersect will be at closer and closer every orbit. 449,222. And when I pass the maneuver node, it's going to stay 449222 until I change the this, the angle maneuver node. Now it's 294527. So maybe we got one more orbit left until we're like a few hundred meters away. Or maybe a thousand or two meters away. But, anyways, we're going to get there. So that's how I'm doing it. There's probably a better way to do this, but I can't figure out how to do it. And this early in the game, I doubt anyone will figure out how to do it. Okay, so it's 294. Move it around a little bit, and now it is 1v5. So we got maybe one more orbit left. It's a very tedious process, I know, but I genuinely can't figure out any better one. And if you can, leave it in the comment section below. Okay, 29 kilometers away. That's acceptable. Honestly, we have to put it here. 32, so we're going to want to put it back a little bit. And then this is going to be 15. Look at that. We're getting an encounter up in here. Just lining up these two yellow dots here, looks like I could get 8,597 meters away. As we do a perfect maneuver node like this, but we could probably get a better one going on if we just accelerate this a little bit. What do we got? 8,700. I think that's the same. We got, uh, that's too much. Okay, I'm just line up the yellow dots. That looks good. 8,000. We're just going to leave it at that. So now we're going to face our maneuver node. Oops, solar panels on this thing. Let's fire this maneuver up. Hmm, <laughs> 12,000 meters? We can still work with that. Nothing's present in life. Oh no, it was just the game glitching. It's 8,721 meters. Still, look at that. Okay, so now we should be able to see our target. Where is it? It's, it's still in front of us. It's 563. Yeah, cool. So we're facing retrograde. No, we're facing prograde. Oops, wrong one. So we should be able to see it somewhere around here. Maybe not quite yet, but as we approach the intersection. We should be able to see it.
There it is, 10 kilometers away. So, now can we get target? Okay, so you want to click that to get target. And then I'm going to click right to read. Because you're moving, you're facing away from the direction you're going in towards the target. Which is good, because so when we pass the target, we're going to want to stop going in that direction and start going towards it again. So it's 8.7, I believe I remember. So we're going to wait till this is 8.7. We're going to fire our engines till target speed is about zero. Okay, it's about zero. So now we're going to face towards the target. 8.7 kilometers away. I'm going to burn our engines one more time. 20 meters per second is pretty good. I'm going to face uh, in retrograde. Gonna speed up time a little bit. In fact, we should get another encounter. Six thousand meters away. Mm. Is that it? Or is this better? No, this is much worse. Okay, it's about six thousand meters away. The faster you go, the faster you get an encounter. But um, we're just taking our time. They were closer than 6,000 actually. Okay, we're just going to burn retrograde now. Because it's almost perpendicular towards the target. When the target icon is perpendicular to the retrograde icon on the nav ball, that means that you're going, um, well, perpendicular to it and you want to go towards it. So. Okay. It's about zero. It's actually one, but. It's not going to affect us too much. We're going to go faster than 20 meters a second towards the target this time though. Thirty-one point one. Thirty-one seems pretty good. Okay. Getting real close to it. I can almost see it. It's less than a kilometer away. Once those numbers start to go up, we're going to stop. Perfect zero. Nice. How much fuel? We have a lot of fuel left. I, I went over killing this mission just to make it easy on me. And if you guys want to replicate this, It'll be easy on you. But the hard part is yet to come. Oh, we gotta fix retrograde again. Uh, no, we don't, no, we don't. There is no retrograde yet. Okay. 10 million seconds seems good. Now we're gonna face retrograde. The hard part is the docking. Okay, we can see it now, look at that. Okay, so, pro tip here, you can press the brackets, or the, um, I don't know what they're called, but it's next to the P button on most keyboards, it's the brackets buttons, and you can switch between vessels. So. We could control from here, okay, so you can switch between vessels with these brackets that are close by. 
But um, another pro tip is when you want to dock, you want to control from your docking port. Can we do that? Better be able to do that. We don't really need to do that just yet. All we need to do is you need to set this as target. I really hope we can do that one. So we're gonna have to face it manually. Is that what happened? Okay, advanced controls. Sorry, yes, that's true. set as target. Cool. Okay, now that that clamp is set as target, what we can do is we can face towards target. Do SAS. You notice this one doesn't have the arc reaction control system dusters like that one does. But this one has more fuel on it. Actually, is it completely out of fuel? Are you serious? That's odd. It wasn't when I remember it earlier. It was full on fuel. But anyways, we'll just pretend it's full on fuel. And from here, we're going to try and control from here again. Okay, not going to work. We don't really need it. And, um... It's useful when the command pod is in a different orientation than the docking port, like if it's radially attached. You're going to want to control from here. But yeah, now that we're facing each other, what we're going to do is we're going to press the R button, or we can just click this, RCS, or press R, so turn it on and off. If I remember correctly, I'll double check in a second, but if I remember correctly, it's I to go forward, K to go backwards, J to go left, L to go right, H to go up, and N to go down. No, sorry, H to go forward and N to go back. So, ace for forward, we're going towards it. At um, 0.5 meters per second. We're going to speed it up a little bit to 1 meter per second. So that's how you use your rack and control system dusters. You're going to make sure, I'm just going to say it again, it's ace to go forward and to go backwards, I to go up, K to go down, J to go left, and L to go right. It's like WASD, shift and control, except on the right side of the keyboard. It's a good way of visualizing it. I'm gonna go a little faster, 1.5 meters per second. And we're gonna time warp a little bit. I remember time warp used to mess up rendezvous a lot in KSP1, so I'm not fond of it in docking. Okay, now we're gonna slow ourselves down a lot. And boom! Just like that, we docked. First, first, first try. That was nice. So why would you want to dock it in the game? Well, you should be able to um, switch fuel tanks from one uh, tank to the other. I actually can't figure out how to do that because there's no tweakables. But I doubt they won't add it in the future in the game. They're definitely going to add it in the game in the future. So, this will stand the test of time, like one commenter said in my last video, with the heat shields, which you don't need heat shields in the first version of KSP2. But I put a huge slot on it anyway, stood the test of time. This will stand the test of time, and you'll be able to dock easier, you'll be able to use movement noise easier, you'll be able to, um transfer fuel from one vessel to another and that's pretty much it on that note i'll see you guys later Peace.